Morning chillings, Phil Beckwith. Do you know I'm the professional painter and decorator? Or I am a professional painter and decorator. Back with you, bit of a follow up. Recently did, a few days ago, um, setting up my new Graco 495 ST Max 2 PC Pro sprayer. And I said I'd come back, do a bit of a quick video, and I'll say quick, I'd like to do this under 10 minutes not an hour, under 10 minutes. So let's get through the intro and I'll come back with you and we'll talk about what I'm gonna do, spraying Doris the door with my new bit of kit. So see you in 15 seconds, shall we say? Bye bye. Love me intros now. Doing myself, you know. Don't cost me a fiver. Right, I'm going to take you off camera. I'm going to show you what I've done because it's a brand new, literally a brand new sprayer. So let's whip you off the camera and we'll do the uh, talky talky, demoy demoy, like this. So I'm going to flip you around. There's Doris the door. See Doris the door. All right. Here's the gun. I've got the gun all set up. Right, I've got the spray set up now. Here we go. Brand new sprayer. We did in the last video setting up the hopper, but this this machine was that brand spankingly new. There was still all the. Um, or oh, travelling oil, whatever you want to call it, the mineral oil that they use for packing, literally packing it up for delivery. So we've had to flush that out. Now, how I flush that out, set up all the hopper, warm water. What do I mean warm water? I got a bucket of warm water with some fairy liquid in it and I flushed it through. I did three bucketfuls of this. Then I did cold water to neutralise the soapy water because warm water and soap mix make bubbles yeah we know that cold water is the um the thing that makes it not bubbly now i did that and then for safe measures i did it again but this time i used something that i thought we could kill all the greasy some wash wax put that in it flushed it through with that then cleaned it out with water again and then flushed it out with water again i knew all the oil and mineral oil was all out because I checked where the filter was and if you remember the last video I'm keeping a black filter in there which is the is it 60 mesh the big one I can't remember um, keeping the black filter in there I flushed it all out made sure it was all clean there was nothing in there and now I've come to the point where I've put paint in now let's just say if you don't know about these sorts of sprayers, it's got a blue link. I've connected that to my phone. That's all registered with my phone now. So it tells me how much paint um, I'm flushing through it. Well, I'm saying flush because I'm looking at the word flush. On the top, this is your dial. When it's in the off position, it's obviously you turn on there to get it working for priming, flushing, you turn it there and then the more pressure you want you turn it up and up you see it's kicking in because it's giving me more pressure that's taking me to 2000 I don't need 2000 psi to spray what I'm spraying I only want to be around about the thousand probably 1200 so because that's gone up I need to release that pressure so the downward position puts into prime turn it back to spray and you know it's spray because that's the hose under there can you see hose under there brings it up there and out and i've probably dropped down to about a thousand so that's where i want to be did you notice that i've got a little because i love little you remember that little sprayer i did a test on oh yes um filter bag well it's not a filter bag it's a vegetable bag i strain and filter my paint through that before it goes through the rock guard which is big at the bottom underneath there and then it comes through the machine it's going through that black mesh in there and then all through my hose coming all through to the gun and i've got the whip hose on i'm going to try it with the whip hose 
I've got the blue mesh filter in there which is your fine filter because I'm using an FF can you see that FFLP and it's I'm going to go with a 210 I'm going to be painting Doris the door 210 will be fine because a 210 will give me um, roughly about a, a four inch spray fan pattern working on the principle of 10 to 12 inch away from the surface or a fish size you know the hole a 10 the bigger the number the bigger the hole we know about that I've, I spoke about it before so here we are that's all cleaned out flushed out clean water and I've tested it with paint I've put paint through it I've got the slot bucket which is there always have a slot bucket to flush your paint into let's get that back over here slot bucket there I've even had a heater on warming my paint now can you remember intact 40 that's what I'm using today it's a tickerilla this is some spare paint I'd got I'm not using the undercoat I'm just using this as a demo paint I put a splash of water into it and when I mean a splash I mean a splash only a little bit just to make it flow nicely because it's cold today I've had the heater on it I've had it in a bucket of water to keep it warm but as soon as I've opened the garage door obviously the um, temperature drops and the paint drops as well so there is a splash of water in it I, I am spraying with a fine finish spray tip on the gun so I want a nice even flow of paint I don't want it too thick and I don't obviously want it too thin to be running so that's where we are I think I've explained that enough. If I haven't, just give us some comments if I missed anything out. What's interesting, you'll have to do a bit of research yourself. Um, the, blue t the Bluetooth of Blue Link is quite interesting. Once you've got it set up on your phone, it's quite self explanatory on turning it off, turning it on, and then connecting it to your phone, turning it off, turning it back on again so it's not connecting to any other phone. Follow the instructions on there, and jobs are good. And, uh, again, self explanatory. So for now, I'm going to get you back on the tripod. I'm going to show you some basic I don't want criticizing from your spray technique because this is the first time literally the first time that I'm going to be trying this out on Doris the door and um, I want to have a feel for the gun and um, see how the paint performs so anybody who picks up on or oh, you've sprayed the door but you've not done the edges I'm not interested in the edges I just want to see what it's spraying like up and down on the door so um, bear with us on that I'm gonna put you on pause I'm gonna get you on the tripod get your position so you can see what I'm doing and um, we'll take it from there so see you in a second right back with you set the camera back up on the tripod got Doris the door there got me spray up with the whip hose and as I said earlier, I'm using a 210 spray tip. Now you're going to say, Phil, what pressure are you spraying? Well, I could take you back to the machine, couldn't I? But no, I don't need to do that. On my phone, I've got the app. And the app is telling me, I don't know whether you can see that. It's telling me 1350. So that's 1000, sorry, 1350 PSI. I'm going to try that. I might be able to just turn it down a bit or I might find that's all right. We're only demonstrating. We're not on a posh job, are we? We're in Phil Beckwith's garage. Made as his Tony Hart painting studio. So what I'm going to do, I've got sample. I don't know you can just see that there. I've done a couple of test samples of the sprayer from that to see how it performs. I didn't want any tails. It looked a little bit weak on the edges, so that's why I just turned it up. We were spraying it a thousand just to test it, and I've just gone to the 1350. Um, if you look on the dial, it just looks like it's over the thousand psi. So that's where we are. Let's give it a couple of seconds. I need to get my mask on. I need to get my overalls on, and then we'll do top to bottom of the door. I don't want to have a tongue in cheek, the tongue in cheek joke of spraying a door like you'd paint a door, doing the mouldings. Do it. See, I'll do the moulding, the panel. Then we go to the um, top rails and styles and bits and pieces. That's another video. We've had a joke about that. This is proper video, testing this gun out, testing the sprayer out, seeing how it performs, seeing what pressure I'm spraying at, and generally just telling you what my um, feedback is of it. So, overalls and a mask. The overalls go over my jeans. That's why they're called overalls. And then when I get in my Porsche, when I get when I get in my Porsche, I can just take my overalls off and I've got my jeans underneath, not getting any dust and dirt over everything. So overalls all on. 
Mask. Sunstrom mask. You know, I'll just go over. People have asked me. Sunstrom mask. I've had it over 30 years. Well, nearly 30 years. It's got three lots of filtration on it. I've got a pre-filter at the front. There's particle filter there. And then there's a biological gas filter. And when I say it feels like I'm breathing fresh air. Seriously, it feels like I'm breathing fresh air. Brilliant mask. Get these from like Arco Safety Products and various places. It's a Sunstrom, is it SR100 mask, silicone, so you can wash it nicely. These you keep on until you feel like they're not um, performing well, but you don't have to change these every 12 months or anything, just you'll know. Your pre filter on the front, you do change. So we've changed that. I'm going to get the mask on. Again, you could talk amongst yourselves while I'm spraying if you like, or Put some comments while you're waiting. So away we go. Can you hear me mother? I'm going to start right to left over there bringing it down top to bottom and seeing what the performance is. I'll be interested to hear how the machine is because on my GX I don't know if you can see oh, over there on my GX, oh no, that's my garden sprayer. We're moving across this one. On my GX FF, um, when that's pumping, it's doing 10 to the dozen, it's going do, 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 do. This, I'm hoping, this machine will be a lot quieter and um, a bit like having a Rolls Royce being a funeral car. You've got a big engine, but only doing low speed, so you're not putting too much pressure through it. Pressure, I mean, putting pressure on it, not pressure because it's a spray. <sighs> Let me get spraying. Got a bit of a tail there, so I'm going to turn it up. Just turn it up a bit. This is why I'm testing it. Let's have a look what pressure I'm spraying at. That started off all right, and then there's a right little bit of a tail on it. Now, I've got a feeling, this is a new spray tip, new spray gun. It's ideal, flush a load of paint through it first, and I've not got a load of paint through it first. What I've done is flushed it with water, tried it with a bit of paint. I'm just getting a bit of a, a, rope, a ropey tail. It's literally, it's not even finger tail, it's ropey, you can see it there. You can actually see the pattern of the spray that I've actually done. Now let me just have a look what pressure I'm spraying it at. It says I'm still at 13, oh, like connect, let's have a look. Spray not available, oh, this, this good app this is. I'm gonna have a look on the machine, so see you in a second. Right, I'm back. I've just got it to 1500 um, PSI, I'm gonna see what that's like. Hopefully, I wonder if the app's picking up back up on it again. You know what? <laughs> no. Right, 1500 PSI, let's see how we go at that.
very little overspray. Let's see if my phone's kicked in to tell me what I'm spraying at. Okay, it's not available. Turn the machine on, turn the machine off. There's still a bit of a tail on that. Now I'm going to put that down to, um, it's not tail. I don't want to say it's a tail because if you got a tail like that with the paint being thin, you could drop down to a, a smaller orifice size. It wasn't so much that because it sprayed first time round fine. It was, um, as I started to spray, it, a bit like a bit of a blockage on it. So I'm going to put that down to a new tip, new sprayer. We need to flush it through. So we haven't done that. Um, you can see a bit of sitting on there with um, a bit of oil that's on it. But I must say, the machine wasn't kicking in going it was just nicely ticking over, which that's what I was expecting to see. Let's check my pressure again. No, the app's good, isn't it? Get rid of that. So that's actually sprayed quite nicely. The whip hose made it really easy because 1500 psi, if we just check on the machine, 1500 psi um, still quite low. It's well under 2000, isn't it? halfway between I think 1000 and 2000 so yeah that sprayed nicely and even with that little bit of a finger tail on one side because it did seem more on one side than another um, that's covered nicely so conclusion I think I'm going to really like this sprayer um, that gun really nice it's lightweight the added beauty the added beauty of that whip hose is the flexibility of that if you feel a bit flush, you've got some Christmas money or somebody's given you some birthday money, you can get this gun in a compact version, which is, if I state this, say about a third of the size, half the size on the handle, which makes it easy to get into nooks and crannies. So while I'm demoing it to you, I've got it on lock. I've still on spray, I could turn it to there, so nothing's going to out. Nothing's going to come out. So yeah, that's a lovely gun. Buy these if you want to buy one of these separately, about 230 40 quid. Nice, nice feel. Whip hose, I wish I'd have had one years ago. But saying that, let's call that a day. I'm going to clean the machine out now. You're going to say, Phil, are you going to clean it? Exactly how I flushed it out when I was um, preparing it for spraying. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll just show you quickly. The machine's there. Let's just zoom in. What I'm going to do is where the oh, it's coming there. Where the I'm going to take this out, which is the prime, and I'm going to get my tin of paint, and I'm going to prime the paint back into the tin. Now I'm not going to prime it with. I'm not going to prime it with full power. I'm going to turn it back down to flush. I'm going to turn it. And that's actually emptied the hopper of paint back into my paint tin, which that's what I want to do. Now I could put water in there, cold water flush it all the way through, flush it out the pipes of the gun and do exactly the same there, all on lower pressure, slow prime and then um, just get some warm water, a little bit of soap in it, very liquid, washing up liquid, flush it through that, that'll just emulsify any emulsion, get rid of that and then you can just put some cold water back through it to get rid of any soap and then if you've got it, get some pump armour, particularly if you're going to be leaving it for any length of time, pump armour, flush it through and um, you can leave it until the next time. If you haven't got any pump armour, back in the day when I was at college and um, my original spray machines used to put a bit of methylated, uh, sorry methylated, but used to put some white spirit in it, that would stop um, the rusting on the ball bearings and things like that. Never had any problem with that. Just remember if you've had put some methylated, um, just keep saying methylated spirit, white spirit through it, next time you come to use it, flush that out well because you don't want that mixing, particularly if you're using water-based paints. If you are using oil-based paints, when you are flushing and cleaning it out, you don't want to be using plastic buckets, you want to be using metal pails, pail, a metal pail like Jack and Jill. 
went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. You want to be using a metal pail and when you come to flushing it out with your um, white spirit, make sure you're earthed. I want to say earthed, use the metal of the gun, hold it against the actual pail of the bucket. That will stop any static build up in the pipes. Um, well, I haven't static build up, you get a shot, flash, catch fire. So we're not going to do that. We're walk, working with water based and I like to keep with water based. So plastic buckets all right for that. So are we good to go? Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for giving me the likes, subscribes. We're only, what, 10, 15 minutes into this. So thanks very much. I'm quite happy with that. We'll flush that tip through so it beds in a bit more and we're good to go. But see you on the next one. Bye-bye. So um, let's just have a bit of a look at what we've sprayed. Now, I said to you I wanted it a bit thinner so it flowed out. No orange peel on that. It is flowing out, it's still drying. But remember when I said a bit of a tail on one side because that spray tip was too new. Um, cleaning it out, I flushed it out, tried it again, it's actually all right. So a bit down to, I'll not say human error, but when you've got new spray tips, make sure you flush plenty of paint just so the um, bed in. Uh, obviously not give it enough time to bed in. But this has sprayed up actually quite nicely. Remember when you're doing spraying, you've got that 50-50 overlap. So your 50-50 overlap catches anything if you miss it really. You shouldn't be missing anything with a 50-50 overlap. Just think about your technique. Don't go too fast, don't go too slow. Think about your back. Should you be using your knees? Should you be bending? Would you be better with that clean shot on? All things you've got to think about and it comes with practice and experience and time. But don't feel too bad about it if you get it wrong first time round. We all get it, things wrong, don't we, first time round. But this, I'm quite happy with this. It was just a demo of trying the machine out. It wasn't a demo on how to spray a door. Um, we can do that another time, can't we? Spraying doors again. It was just seeing how it performed, spraying, low pressure. I know it was 1500, just to try and get right, rid of that tail, but the tail went once I started flushing it through, particularly with water, and then tried it again. So we're all good with that, I'm happy. But no, the door has actually come up really nicely. This is that Ticarilla Intact 40, which is 40% sheen. If you look down, I mean, it's got some greasy finger marks on it, so that's why you've got sitting. But we've not got any runs. It's nicely evenly covered. And when that's dry, it'll be quite nice. It'll be another nice base for me to work on with Doris the door. So yeah, thanks for watching. That's how we are. It's quite impressive. Good bit of kit. Thank you very much.